Press Row is back. We had the holidays, we had some bowl games, we had some miscommunications on the schedule, but we are back. We're ready to go. Zach it only Bars. took a month. It only took a month. Aaron Matthews, Mark Kuntz, I'm Matt Finkel. Excited to be back talking high school sports. Let's jump right in. We got NWC boys basketball, a couple teams at the top. Think we're going to have an outright winner in this conference? I don't think so. I think, it, I think it's going to be shared. You look at this league and it seems like each and every night, you don't know who's going to win, you don't know who's going to lose. That's how close I think this league is from top to bottom. Maybe one of these teams will get red hot come later in February and pull away, or later in January, I should say, and pull away. But I, I, don't, think, I don't think there's going to be an outright champion. I'll, I'll answer this. I'm not sure because there's a lot of variables out there right now. Bluffton with the one loss on the season that, now granted, that was non-league against Ottawa Glandorf. That could be a possible district final preview at Bowling Green coming up in March. But you look at the schedule, Bluffton still has Spencerville next Friday. That's a home game. They go to Crestview at the end of February on the 20th. And Spencerville also has to play Crestview still. at and Crest, That game is at Crestview February 6th. Don't count out Lincoln View, right. Columbus Grove, right. and Paulding. Paulding right now, yeah. a little bit of a hiccup. Sean Brewer's team was one of my co-picks at the beginning of the season to be the Northwest Conference champion. I had them and Spencerville pinged, and that could still happen. For me, I'm, I'm shocker here. I still like the Spencerville Bearcats to be in the forefront. I really do think that they're going to pull it together here. We watched That was a fun game on Saturday, past, wasn't this it? This past weekend, and I think that you're starting to see some of the pieces come together. For me, it really comes down to the Bearcats, Grove, and Crestview. And in the end, I think the biggest game is going to be the last game of the season for both the Knights and the Bulldogs, which is Crestview versus Columbus Grove. I really feel that that could have something to say about whether or not we see an outright champion or just a, a three-way tie. Yeah, you both already touched on it. Crestview plays Bluffton and Grove back-to-back -back Fridays, February 20th, 27th. I think with those two games, that's going to be the deciding Bluffton's factor. Bluffton's got a, a lot of opponents yet to, to play. They the, do. The back half of their schedule is um, by far more – uh, challenging than the first They've half. got Liberty Benton, I know, coming up in uh, in February, a game that will be on WOSN, by the way. <laughs> Shameless plug for the play-by-play -play guy who's doing <laughs> that game that day. But I, I, I like, I think if you were to say a surprise team of the year, it would be Bluffton as of mm -hmm. right now with just the one loss. And you didn't really know what to, to expect from them coming in. And they're proven they can hang with anybody. They bounced, I mean, they, they were down big early to OG last Saturday night. They cut it to four. They lost by 12. OG hit some shots late to get that W. And, uh, you know, Bluffton and Todd Boblett, it's really good to see them in the mix once again in the Northwest Conference. I think that Bluffton-OG game, I think, is your perfect example of a team really getting tested Friday night in their league game and then coming out a little bit slow the non-league game on Saturday because OG just jumped out and built a huge lead in the first quarter. And while Bluffton was able to make it a little bit closer, they could never quite get back into the game to get over that hump. On the flip side, you look at Ottawa Glandorf there, they really wanted to prove they came something back as well home. because mm -hmm. they came back after getting stomped yep. by Salina down at the field house. So let's move to the Western Buckeye League now. That was a big <laughs> one over the weekend, OG Salina. Now it sets up this weekend, Salina versus Defiance. And those two teams undefeated in, in the league. Is this the de facto WBL championship game, or is it too early to say that? I think it's too early. Like you had mentioned before, a lot of variables. Salina is still my favorite. And I'm really hoping Salina doesn't let me down this season because <laughs> they have been my favorite in They're that fun to league watch. the last few years. I love the style that they play. But Defiance is good. And I watch them. The only time I've seen Defiance – in person was against Elida, right. where they struggled. But you could Low still see game, right? the talent there. You could see the skills that, that Bluffton, ha or I'm sorry, Defiance has. And so this is going to be a great game, I think. Right now it is for the title, in my opinion. It puts the winner mm -hmm. in the driver's seat, and then you've got a team with one loss, regardless of who it is. You've got Ottawa Glandorf, who's already had a slip up in the yep. league as well, coming from this past week. Don't count out St. Mary's, guys. I was going to say, you got Salina St. Mary's. Don't count out St. Mary's. Too. Don't count Wapakoneta either. And yes, but I, I was impressed I, with Wapakoneta. I, 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 I think I think the winner too. of this game it, it will go on to win the WBL title, though. I think that it's definitely uh, two champ or two uh, that are going to be in the forefront. But there's a lot of spoilers in the in the WBL. Yeah, that was what I wanted to bring just up. Could just pop up on one night and maybe ruin something for one of these teams. Agreed. Top to bottom, I think the league is very competitive, and like a team like Shawnee, even if Jaden mm -hmm. O'Neill gets hotter, you never know who's yep. going to step up on any given Friday night, and then that could throw off the Our entire... Our team scores 29 points in a quarter and cuts a 12 <laughs> point, 14 point lead to four. Could happen. We've seen it. <laughs> yep. 
staying in the WBL, let's go to the girls' side. Can anybody beat the Bath Wild Kittens? One word answer. Is nope. it no? <laughs> Wapkinetta has Bath yes, this they, Thursday. Big game. I think Wapkinetta's got the best chance of yes. doing it. I don't know if they will. I've been impressed with Bath's fast break. The way they move the ball on the fast break, they're forcing turnovers, quickly getting down floor. Alyssa Manley, very good at the point, very good at finding teammates on that fast break, and they've got finishers. I, I don't think Wapkinetta will beat Bath. I think Bath will have another undefeated WBL season, but I think this is probably going to be the best chance for somebody to hand Bath a WBL loss this week. We thought it might be OG early in the season, and Bath got by them. This bat team is just very experienced. Five seniors who've been playing yep. together for a long time and watched them beat Ottoville last night in a game you can see on WOSN this week. And there's just a lot to like for Greg Mock's group. All right, moving on now to the Ohio State National Champions. First ever college I football that playoff. Like come with in to the show with some Ohio State theme music or Mark would be singing. <laughs> well, it's definitely exciting that. Monday night to watch them win it all. Now, everybody? No. Not at all. <laughs> nah. But I'm a, like, like a good fan, I'm already looking forward to next season. Are they guaranteed a spot back in the playoff? you, you got to be excited about what they're returning and the way they finished this year. When you think back, Mark, you know, back in August, this team came so far. Absolutely. I don't think you can guarantee anybody a spot in the playoffs, particularly this new format where, as we saw this season, this college football playoff committee did an excellent job of really assessing each team every week and not allowing necessarily that, well, they're the defending national champions, so they're going to have a spot. They really did a good job looking at it. And quite frankly, there's a lot of different variables. We don't know who the quarterback is going to be for Ohio State. We don't know who is going to be in that quarterback room. Cardell Jones possibly going to the NFL, possibly returning. We know the situation with Braxton Miller possibly transferring. Pretty sure JT Barrett's going to be back. That's about the only thing we can <laughs> yeah. be pretty sure of. But you have the health issues with both Barrett and Braxton. And, I, I you know, I, there is certainly going to be an adjustment period with the new quarterbacks coach, Tim Beck. You'll have co-offensive coordinator responsibilities along with Ed Warner. They have yet to define who's going to be the one physically calling the plays. It's always been, though, a little bit of a group effort. I will say this, though. You know, Tom Herman came to Ohio State from Rice and from Iowa State. Urban Meyer said we didn't run the Rice offense, we didn't run the Iowa State offense, we ran the Ohio State offense. And with Tom Herman in Houston, we will continue to run the Ohio State offense. It's not going to be a Nebraska offense now that Tim Beck is there. I don't think you're going to see a whole lot of changes offensively. But there, you, you take Tom Herman out of the equation, that's another question mark for the upcoming season. I think there's one thing that this uh, kind of the rest of the bowl games proved, which is the Big Ten is going to be tough. And there's some tough games next year. I think Ohio State plays at Michigan State. You've got Wisconsin on the schedule. You've got the Rutgers. Um, Oklahoma, I think, is next year. And so there's going to be challenges. No, the, their, their non-conference schedule next year, they open up on – Labor Day Virginia Tech. at Virginia Tech, Virginia Tech sorry. back home that following Saturday for Hawaii, and then they've got a couple of oh, Mac yeah. floors, Northern yep. Illinois, and uh, is it Akron or Kent? Or it might be Central. might be Central. I think it's Central Michigan. But you, you, you talked about their, their conference schedule. Yeah. They've got a beast to finish off the year. Michigan State at Michigan, and then hopefully, if you're an Ohio State fan, Big Ten championship <laughs> game, and then a national semifinal, and then a championship game. So it, that could be a really a juggernaut to go through at the end of the year. Yeah, one loss will knock you out of the, the running. I think really, excuse me, guys. <clears throat> Didn't realize we we're getting y'all choked up. <laughs> excuse this me. This is an emotional win for Aaron. Yeah. Very, very emotional here, guys. Excuse me. Yeah, no. Um, really, I think unless this team's decimated by injuries, they're going to be fine. They come in. I think Vegas says, no, entertainment purposes only. Nine, yeah. nine to two, right? That's what I nine saw. Nine to two. And I think no matter who the quarterback is, they can do it. You talk about injuries, the depth for Ohio State. Hmm. Keep this in mind. This next season, Ohio State is finally back up to the full complement of 85 scholarship players. Yeah. Very true. And there's Most, already been quite a few high-profile commits, too. Yeah, during halftime of the national <laughs> championship. Yeah. That's, that'll do it, too. Get on national TV, play for a national title. Most important for me, returning four-fifths of this offensive line, which right. just really asserted itself as mm -hmm. the best in college football down the stretch, so that's going to be a big piece, and of course Ezekiel Elliott with that. Yeah, that's why retaining him and Ed his Warner, abs, him and his abs. Retaining Ed Warner, that was a huge thing for Ohio State to, because of the, the job he has done. Hmm. You, you think about that offensive line; they lost four starters from the 2014 offensive line, three of which starting in the NFL. You have two converted defensive linemen on this year's offensive line: Daryl Baldwin and also Billy Price. Baldwin has graduated; he's done fifth-year senior. So they're going to have to replace Baldwin on the offensive line. But the job Ed Warner has done, 
both in building an offensive line from two years ago that was decimated from, gradu from graduation, and then again last year's guys who graduated, what they came forward this year. He he's just done a remarkable job. It's understandable why mm -hmm. Urban Meyer was so keen to keep Ed oh, Warner. Yeah. So Ohio State ends up as the last team standing in the first college football playoff. The NFL playoffs, they've had their system for a while. We're at Championship Sunday. Who do you guys like? We got New England against Indy, Seattle, Green Bay. Should be two pretty good games. Well, what's weird is that Seattle being the West Coast team is the first game up. Right. A three, like a 308 kickoff is going to be 1208 out West. Something tells me the fans won't mind that, though. They won't there. mind. No, no, they won't mind. And the reason it is is the NFL – they flip-flop every year, the AFC game and the NFC game. Who goes first? This year it happens to be Seattle and the NFC game. That being said, I'm going with the pack. Oh, wow. Still go I'm going with the pack. I had Green Bay at the beginning of the year coming out of the NFC. And as far as the AFC goes, my heart says Indy. <laughs> my head says New England. So either way, I mean, New England's just, I, in my opinion, they're pretty much on another stratosphere right now when it comes to teams in the AFC. But Indianapolis proved that they could go into a hostile environment last week like they did in Denver and get the win. No, no reason why they can't do the same thing again this week against New England. Packers have eight, got A.J. Hawk. Yes. You've got Boom Heron and Jack Mehort on the Colts. <laughs> Wait, yes. I'm Packers and Colts. I'm a different measuring tool here for, for Mark. <laughs> I think you got one out of the two right. I'm going with the Patriots, but I think Seattle will take it against the Packers. The only reason I would go with Green Bay over Seattle is that Green Bay's offense was so prolific all season long. I know Rodgers is hobbled. Carolina put over 300 yards of total offense against Seattle, and that's something they hadn't did, allowed in over two months. Hmm. I could see Green Bay doing that. Maybe Green Bay capitalizes more on those opportunities. We'll see. Either way, it's going to be a great game on both sides, and we'll, have, we'll know who's playing for the Super Bowl in Arizona come next week. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Press Row. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you out. Enjoy those games on the weekend.